Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are all doing great and are having a great week, day, night, whatever. I just wanted you guys to have good vibes and just good energy in your life. And today's video I'm very, very excited for because today I'm going to be talking about how to dress more feminine. And I want us to look at very different types of dressing when it comes to the feminine sp uh, specter and the way that i can talk a little personal about the way that i've learned how to dress more feminine and i just want to put this into perspective that when i think of dressing feminine i think about dressing towards what suits you what fits you what complements you because we're all so different and to just say to everyone how they should all dress in one way would be completely wrong I think we all should embrace just how we are different but we're all feminine but we're all different in our own unique ways and we need to um, also take that into account when we are dressing because the part of being in the feminine level up journey is about recognizing what fits you and what doesn't because when I think of traditionally feminine uh, clothing, I think of things that, as ruffles, for instance, the texture of ruffles with, in my head seems very feminine, but that's not something that suits my body type. It doesn't suit my style. And because of that, that's not something I wear, even though you can categorize that as feminine. So that's why I think in this video, I really want to dissect into what how you should dress and what fits your feminine body and how you can complement your own work, make sure that your wardrobe complements you the best way possible. So it's gonna be a big video, so I hope you guys are very comfortable, but I'm super excited. So let's dive into the first part. I think first things first, you need to look at your body type. I took this test called the Kibi test and it's a really great test that I'm gonna link down below in the description box. But basically it tells you it makes you answer these few types of questions and through those questions you get an answer and that answer would be your body type because dressing for your body type is extremely important as i said before you might wear a very heavy coat and it looks very chic and classic and feminine but the problem here is that it might not suit you because it's not the same the perfect complementary uh, uh, shape for your body so and that's why the kibi test is one of the great tests that we have it's a little old now but it's pretty um productive and giving you an idea of what type of body type you have and what should fit you and what shouldn't and um if we just take a very brief look at the different body types i'll get very quick on this because there's so many but i'll link more links about it down below and the first one is the dramatic so think strong and symmetrical features with a bold and sharp overall appearance um there's many celebrities that have this body type but it's uh, just it's very noticeable this type of body type and it's very bold as i said before and the next one would be a natural and this one is more relaxed and uncontrived essence so this one is more um I, I know a lot of people in my life that have that type of body type, so maybe it might be considered um, very common. The next one is a classic that's more balanced and harmonious features with a timeless and elegant style. And then we have the flamboyant natural that's a robot, robust and dramatic elements with a free spirit and adventurous vibe. We have the soft natural, which is blended and gentle attributes with a naturally casual and relaxed presence. Then we have the soft gamine, that's the more petite and mischievous qualities with a mix of asymmetry and softness. And then we have a soft classic that's graceful, refined characteristics with a balanced blend of softness and classic elements. Next, we have soft dramatic, which is my body type, fun fact. And this is more striking and sculpted features with a touch of softness and drama. Next up, we have the flamboyant gamine. That's a bold and animated. This body type has a bold and animated attribute with a gamine-like playfulness and quirkiness. 
Next up, we have the theatrical dramatic that is sensual and extravagant features with theoretical, uh, th theor theoretical and romantic elements. And then we have the romantic, soft and delicate quality. So these are all of the 12 different Kibi body types. And if I was you, I would go and take that test that I've linked down below. And I would try to figure out from that test what body type I have. Let's take me for example how I did that. So I got the soft dramatic, I took the test, and then I found out what types of um, materials and what types of clothing doesn't fit me. And those, uh, and those clothing I just stopped wearing and I started buying more of the things, um, of the things that do fit me. For instance, another soft dramatic that I look towards is Sofia Vergara. She has more of the type of style that I lean towards because she is the same body type as me. So she will wear a lot of bootcut jeans and that's what I wear because it like accentuates my, um, my figure more. It shows off my waist which is really complimentary if you have a soft dramatic body type. And I just avoid very heavy clothing that doesn't show my body type because they make me feel, uh, I don't know, it makes it look like it's draped on me. It doesn't look very um, elegant. It doesn't look very feminine on me if I don't wear clothing that is more fitting and more showing off my body type and my waist. So that's something interesting to look at if you also want to find out what body type you have. Another YouTuber that is amazing at this and she goes even deeper into this that I would really recommend you guys to check out is Ellie Jean. I will also link her down below and she goes even further into what it goes with this kibby system and body types. So I would really recommend that and also figuring out your own and you will reap so many benefits from that. Part two in your feminine clothing and style journey would be a color season. So color season is this palette of colors that fits you and your undertone and your skin tone and everything. It's what fits you the best, what colors complement you, what colors don't complement you and they don't do much for you. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I, I wear certain colors and they don't really make me look as good as other colors. Um, for instance, my color season is a warm autumn, I think it's called. It would mostly be colors that is leaning towards the warm specter. It would be like oranges, browns, gold, reds. Those are usually the types of colors I lean towards naturally because they look and complement me and my skin color, my eye color, color way better than say cold colors such as blue and, and pastels. They don't really fit me very well. So I would really look at also what is your color season and have you noticed certain colors complement you and look better on you than others? Another way I look at it is what type of colors do I wear when I get compliments from people usually? Most of the time when I wear gold jewelry, I'll get way more compliments about that from people than when I wear silver jewelry. So that's a little bit of an indicator on what type of color season I am and what fits me and what doesn't. And trust me, this can be a really big um, benefit for you if you learn what your color season is. Because then you can finally base off your cl closet on this, uh, what your color season is. Let's say you find out what your body type is. Once you've done that, you look towards your color season. Once you've done that, you just base off all of your um, uh, all of this information and you create your own closet out of that and it will really, really elevate your look and make you look better, feminine and chic. And I think that those are really just basic but fundamental things that can really elevate one's um, looks. So once I've done that, the next part will be your hair, part three. So the way that I think of hair is it's very individual. There's so many aspects to hair. Some people have straight hair, curly hair, um, wavy, you name it. There's so many different types of hair textures out there. Um, so just I like to start from the basics, which is what is your face shape? To me, I have an oval face shape. So based on that, I will usually go for haircuts that complements that the most. 
because I have such an oval face, I've noticed that if I ha don't have layers in my hair, uh, my face kind of looks really long, longer than usual, and it doesn't look very complimentary. But once I get my hair cut in layers, it just kind of like brightens my face a little bit. It makes me look more elevated and as if I did something to my face, but actually I just cut my hair in layers. So really look at what type of face shape do you have? Do I have a round face shape? Do I have a heart face shape? And then out of that, try to really figure out, okay, what type of hairstyle would really complement my hair? And also, once you find that out, what type of what type of hair do you want to have? Like, do you want to straighten your hair or do you want to have it naturally? Or do you want to um, wear wigs? Whatever it is, figure it out. What, what is that fits you the most? What makes you more confident and comfortable? I change my hair all the time. Sometimes I will straighten it. Sometimes I will have it curly. Sometimes I will straighten it and have it curly. But all the things that matter to me is as long as it's healthy and shiny, then that's what really matters to me. Let's say I notice, oh, my hair is starting to get really, um, I don't know, like damaged. Then I cut off my uh, straightener completely and I go full natural for a long time. And I make sure that I, you do a lot of masks. I cut it. I do just give it a treatments and I make sure that it just looks healthy. I think that's the most important step here make sure your hair looks healthy no matter what wear protective hairstyles try to give it really good hair qua hair quality products um i invest a lot in my hair products that's one thing i do makeup i can wear drugstore i don't care but when it comes to my hair i would definitely use that extra money on the hair because hair is very um how do i say this it's very easy to damage your hair it is very very easy to damage your hair and it's really really hard to restore it so based on that you should always try your best just to invest as much great quality products in your hair figure out where your porosity is your hair porosity do you have low porosity hair or high porosity hair um yeah go to your become best friends with your hairdresser because they can really figure out a lot for you they can help you with all of this so and the hair can really make a difference i've heard so many people say that um i don't need to wear makeup but if my hair is done i feel gorgeous and that's true i do believe that i think that's the first thing people notice is if your hair doesn't look healthy and good it's the first thing people notice and i think that's why it's really important to spend a lot of time on this step really try to give your hair that love and care that it does deserve so next one is makeup part four makeup um makeup is an interesting um subject because the thing about makeup is I personally look at it as just a treat. I don't think any woman in this whole world needs makeup. I think we're all gorgeous and beautiful. But if you um, look at makeup as a treat, something that you give yourself when you want to just feel good or just want to make yourself more enhanced in your looks, then makeup can be a great tool for this. As I said before about the color season, I think that's, this step can really benefit from looking at your color season because then you can choose colors such as what your eyeshadow color is going to be, your blush color, etc. It can really elevate your look and make sure that you have a really nice uh, makeup look that complements you and your skin. And after that, I would look at just different makeup looks. I would look, how can I create a natural makeup look? How can I do a glam makeup look? A soft glam, heavy glam, etc. So the thing about it, you don't need to wear um, soft glam or heavy glam every day. That's not what I'm saying. But there is some um, something great about knowing that you know how to do these looks if they're ever needed. Let's say you're going to go to this big event and the only thing you know is natural makeup, which is nothing wrong about that either. But let's say you're craving to do something different to stand out that specific occasion. Then it's always good to know that you have that um, knowledge of how to do this look for yourself. That you don't need anybody's help or a makeup artist to help you do this. You don't have to need anybody's help at all because you've taught yourself how to do these certain looks and those and i consider makeup to be a skill i think other people look at down on like especially men look at down on makeup as a skill and i think that's completely wrong makeup is art 
is an art form it requires time and effort and practice so look at makeup the same way be like yeah i wear natural makeup maybe every day or i don't wear makeup at all but i do know how to do a soft glam when it's needed there's some power to that so make sure to just be informed is my biggest uh, point out of here and also invest in um quality makeup uh and when i say quality makeup best believe i don't mean high-end makeup all the time there's so many great drugstore brands like i think elf is amazing that have great products for a really reasonable price make sure that you get that and also um when it comes to certain makeup tools i like for them to be versatile so for instance let's say i have a blush i would like for it to also be used as a lipstick or a lip uh, lip gloss um maybe not lip gloss but like a lipstick color that could also be your blush that's being versatile and also being able to use my i don't know like my uh eyebrow gel sometimes for my edges i want my makeup to be as versatile as possible because as i said before or once before um this is recession and our economy is horrible these days everything is expensive so it's all about trying to make everything versatile as possible trying to make that one thing be able to do multiple things so i would really invest and look into that as well and also with makeup don't be afraid to try new things as i said before makeup is an art it's all about experimenting and trying new things try to teach yourself how to do a cat eye there's cat eyes are so classic same as a red lipstick super classic can be done for every big occasion putting on a red lipstick will elevate your look 100 and it's so it's always been traditionally feminine to wear red lipstick so yeah just try and experiment and be confident with it and part four last but definitely not least confidence is key I could sit here for hours and hours and talk about all of these different ways that you can elevate your look. But none of this will matter unless you take in your head right now that confidence is the most important thing to achieve the elevated look that you want. Nothing looks good if you don't feel like it does. Let's say I have an example of this. I bought this really great quote coat, but it's not like something I've had before, so I felt uncomfortable wearing it in public. So my friends told me, you know, it's a great quote. You should be more like um, confident about it. So I started acting more confident in my coat and I started receiving compliments all the time when I was wearing it by strangers, by people I didn't know. They were all complimenting me on my jacket. And it wasn't something different about my jacket that made people not compliment on it previously. The only thing that had changed was my attitude and my confidence about it, how it was walking and presenting myself when I was wearing it. And people can gravitate towards that. So take that as a just a tip or an advice. Uh, make sure to just be confident. And if there, let's say you're not comfortable with wearing red lipstick yet, that's okay. Take your time. Then try something else in the meantime. Try a nude lipstick and then gradually get yourself there. If you're not comfortable, it's going to be noticeable. But as long as you're confident and comfortable with what you're doing, that's what truly matters. And that's what's really going to make you look feminine and beautiful and just just very chic. So I hope you guys enjoyed my videos. Um, make sure to comment down below what your thoughts are. What are your tips for dressing more feminine in your everyday life? And do you have any suggestions and advice as well? Um, stay tuned for the next video and also make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. I love you guys so much and take care of yourselves. Bye!